something that we started on. Uh, that is to do with how God grants what he commands. How God grants what he commands. It's one thing that I want us to look on to. Let us run to the book of Isaiah before we consider other things in the exposition and see what the scriptures teach us there. Isaiah 44 I want us to begin with verses 24 So this is one of the things that will help us to put things in a balance so that we come to a place of knowing that when we say solely glory this is what we mean everything is started by God and it is accomplished by God but even from our very salvation it's God who initiated the first step it is him who regenerated us and it is him who brought us to a place of repentance so let us look at this it says in Isaiah 44 24 that says the Lord your redeemer who formed you from the womb I am the Lord who made all things it has to be understood that is the same God who also made the people who call themselves atheists who say that they do not believe in the existence of God he made all things in heaven on earth and in the seas and in all the depths it doesn't to say who alone stretched out the heaven who spread out the earth by myself this is very amazing God spreading out the earth as if it is some sort of a mat so the Bible adds in to say who frustrates the sins of liars we remember that one very much well that time when Moses was also sent in Egypt he encountered so many magicians but the Lord frustrated all of their sins doesn't to say and he makes fools of diviners who turns wise men back and makes their knowledge foolish who confirms the word of his servant now that is very key my dear ones every time we also talk about the language of prophecy if any person says that he is speaking for God never should you ever forget Isaiah 44 26 whoever God has given a word the scriptures are very clear who confirms the word of his servant any person that is not his servant is the one who says that says the Lord and what he has said never comes to pass so how do we know the true servant of God the one who says that says the Lord based on to that which is already now written this is the sure one that can never disappoint us this that is already written but any person claiming a new word or a fresh word it doesn't come to pass it's not a true servant of God and how many times does he have to miss for us to know that he's not a servant of God only once because God cannot miss even only once and he fulfills the counsel of his messengers who says of Jerusalem she shall be inhabited and of the cities of Judah they shall be built now there is where I want you to connect with where we are going who says of Jerusalem are you listening remember we are talking about something 
how God grants what he commands so now the command is this here who says she shall be inhabited and, and of the cities of Judah they shall be built and I will raise up their ruins listen 27 who says to the, to the deep be dry we saw that with what? The Red Sea. And Jordan. Okay, the Bible has to say that uh, I will dry up your rivers. Now 28. Very important. Who says of Cyrus? Today many people are saying that uh, President Trump was a Cyrus. But listen unto what actually Cyrus did in the Bible. Who says of Cyrus? He is my shepherd. And he shall now. I hope we understand this. If it says that Cyrus is my shepherd, not in the sense that Cyrus adds anything to God. But he chose him for a particular purpose. That's why he calls him a shepherd. Now, this is a gentle individual. So many years. This is a prophecy about Cyrus. No one knows that then the future will be a person called Cyrus. But the Alpha and the Omega, the one that has no beginning, he speaks of Cyrus when generations where Cyrus would come from were not yet there. No one knows of his mother. No one knows of his father. But prophetically, the God that is omniscient, that all knowing God, he speaketh and says, Who says of Sarah, is my shepherd, and he shall fulfill, he shall fulfill my purpose. There is a purpose for this gentleman. Saying of Jerusalem, Why about Jerusalem? She shall be built. She shall be built. In the temple of the Lord, your foundation shall be laid. Now, this is Isaiah the prophet. The book of Isaiah is actually commonly called the fifth gospel because it is the most quoted, actually, book by Jesus. Christ in the New Testament. And many of the things it actually speaks of, we see many of them still in the New Testament. But let us try to roll back by also looking at the term of Jeremiah the prophet. Looking at the book of 2 uh, Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. And then we connect something also from there that will also help us to understand what we are talking about here. Let us look at 36 and uh, basically consider in verses 22. This is what it says. Now, first of all, we saw something from Isaiah the prophet. God speaks and he says that Jerusalem had to be rebuilt and the person responsible for that is also named. His name is known as Cyrus. Now looking at 2 Chronicles 36 verses 22 says now in the first year of Cyrus now we are in time Cyrus is already what? Cyrus is already born and because he's born Cyrus is not estranged from the reason as to why he was allowed to be born and his purpose was not also estranged from him. Says now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, the word of the Lord 
what? The word of the Lord. Lock parwar. By the mouth of Jeremiah. Okay, doc, Jeremiah. Might be fulfilled. Mera get chobi. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus. No ba cha rubu twin pa pa Cyrus. Listen to that. I win come. The Lord stirred up. The spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout his kingdom and also put it in writing. Look at 23. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, we know why these things are playing. God spoke so many years before this gentleman was born. And he has sent for him a particular purpose. But now we are seeing the fulfillment of that. Verse 23 says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, what? the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah, Judah, whoever is among you of all his people, may the Lord his God be with him and let him go up. Now, this is another thing for us to understand. The Israelis are in captivity. They are in Persia. But a gentle king being stirred up in the spirit by the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and he has a desire for the things of a Jewish God go to Ezra chapter 1 and see the fulfillment of it all and see that indeed God actually does not only command but he also grants what he commands no enemy man can fulfill that which God has commanded without God granting it. Okay, look at here. In, uh, in Ezra. Beginning of verses 1. It says in the first year of Cyrus, King of Persia, the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, King of Persia. The Bible is self authenticating. Have you seen that? That everything in Isaiah is in agreement with Chronicles. And everything in Chronicles is in agreement with that in Ezra. So the best commentary for the Bible is the Bible itself. As in to say, so that he made a proclamation throughout his kingdom and also put it in, in writing. Verses 2. That says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth you might think this, these guys are copying one another but this is a different era in the time of Ezra but look at this again it adds in to say in verse 3 whoever is among you of all his people may his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem which is in Judah and rebuild the house of the Lord and the, uh, the God of Israel he is the God who is in Jerusalem look at verses 4 and let each survivor in whatever place his sojourns be assisted by the men of his place with silver gold with goods and with beasts besides free will offerings for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Verses 5. Then rose up the heads of the fathers of the houses of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites and everyone whose spirit God had stirred up to rebuild the house. Are you following? He is granting. 
Antica meal. Out together, everything you command a long term ago. Every person that is going to participate in the building, they are being touched by the sovereign hand. And the Bible says in verse 6 and all the way about them, aided them with vessels of silver. If it wasn't the Lord granting, no one would be aiding them with all of this particular actual equipment. And the Bible adds in to say with gold, with goods, with beasts, uh, with costly wares, besides all that was freely offered, Cyrus the king also brought out the vessels of the house of the Lord that Nabi Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from, from Jerusalem and placed in the house of his gods. Verses 8 Cyrus, king of Persia, brought this out in the church of uh, Mithredith, the, the treasurer, who counted them to Sheshbazena and uh, the prince of, of Judah. And this was the number of them. Thirty basins of gold. Baba Dirk made real one thousand basins of silver. Uh Baba Mia Ali Bachel me me jabu. 29 censers 30 bowls of gold 410 bowls of silver and 1000 other vessels and all vessels of gold and of silver were 5400 and all of these did and bring up when the exiles were brought up from Babylon to Jerusalem. That's the thing, my dear ones. That God uses actually a gentle king to fulfill his purpose of rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem and everything that was needed to make sure that the building actually is carried on. He touched every person that he needed to touch so that his work is done. But the beauty of it is that the prophecy about the king happened thousands of years and he uses a gentle king. He stirs up his spirit to fulfill his divine purpose. My dear ones, unless the Lord grants, no one can fulfill whatever he commands. So when people see, and actually today we use the name Seras as a Christian name, because of the purpose that actually God placed before him, he was a very good gentle king, that honored God but this again is to show us that the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord he can do with kings whatsoever thing he wants to do the same thing he has done with us by enabling us to be here it's him working in us and enabling us to desire things which we formerly hated so next week God willing shall also look at another example just to show you my dear ones that there is nothing that is in the New Testament that is not first in the Old Testament everything in the New Testament was first in the Old Testament 